Welcome to Left Play. This is George G. And the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, strong and powerful Brent Powers. Brent, are you ready to do this? George G, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Brent is the owner of Land Sharks. He's an expert investor and coach. He's focusing on buying and selling vacant land. Brent, excited to have you back on. Tell us a little bit about your personal life, some more about your work, and why you do what you do. No, thanks for having me back on again. Uh, it has been a couple of years. Uh, we've moved across the country, you know, away from our 58 acre ranch. Um, we've moved now back to Florida. I've uh, been out, we were out in Colorado for about eight years. Now we're closer to my parents and my wife's parents and, you know, got a, got a few kids, um, got a, a wild um, zoo house going on most of the time. And, you know, I, I married three kids and, why do I do what I do? Um, you know, I, I haven't always been able to do what I, I, I want to do. I was in the military for eight and a half years, and I didn't always have the choices that I've got today. And it just came from a, a few little sacrifices each day, just putting in the uh, work, you know, getting the plan, getting the education, finding the mentors and the coaches and the YouTube channels and the right podcast, um, just like the one we're on here. And taking action every single day that I believe was the, the, the key ingredient like that a lot of people are not taking is they're not actually taking the same guided action each day. So I, that's why I do what I do. Um, I, I have a great business, great, great uh, wife, great children. And I enjoy, you know, getting on these podcasts too, and uh, just getting to kind of talk to other people about, you know, entrepreneurship and business and, you can have the life you want as long as you're willing to take the steps to get it. Amen. So how has the industry of investing in, in vacant land, how has that changed, morphed, evolved, if at all, over the past two years? Well, it's been a wild two years. I'll tell you, two years ago, I would say there was not as much uh, demand for land. And then it's like some like someone turned on the switch and you know, developers couldn't build fast enough. Builders can't build fast enough. I was just out in Colorado Springs and I have, that's where my main operations at. I haven't been out there for one year. My team has been running the show and there is building going on on every street corner. And it's just unbelievable. It's just the, the, the main, the major demand for housing. And that's in the last two years. But here's what, what I've seen in the last two months. It's slowing down. Like I am seeing the buying of vacant, raw, infill, buildable lots and land slowing down. But one thing I haven't seen slow down was the more rural stuff. We've still got the buyers. We've still got the buyers wanting it. They want to get out of town. They want to have a, a place to someday maybe build that cabin. Um, and another thing I, I have seen slow down as well was uh, the last two years was there's such a demand for land. I haven't been able to get it as cheap as I used to two years ago, but it's way easier to sell it. <laughs> and it's also, you can get, get it, you can sell it for more. So I know that's a lot in, in the last two years. It's like it literally like someone, someone turned the switch on to the tidal wave. And it's like now someone turned the switch off for the buildable infill lots, but it's still going steady for our vacant rural land. And none of our buyers have stopped paying. And I pray it keeps continuing like that. Um, but it's been a very interesting couple of years, two years. It's, it's amazing. It is, it is super interesting. That was because I, 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 I should have, I, I can't remember what, what the strategy is for actually acquiring the land. So if I'm buying a vacant piece of, of rural land, am I coming out of pocket with cash? Am I financing? Yeah, there's the thing is that there's so many options to do it. And the thing about vacant land is there's not a lot of financing out there, you know, traditional, like I'm going to walk in the bank of America and get a loan for a piece of land. So it's amazing, you know, how we can work this out. You know, we can, we can get the property under the contract and sell the paper, assign that contract to a builder or a, a buyer or a developer, or we can, we can buy it with financing from the seller, which is a really cool thing. I love doing that because it keeps my cash in my pocket. And then I turn around and sell it to another buyer. It's, we call it basically a wrap. Um, and the, another way is without the, the traditional financing from like Bank of America, a lot of times land sellers are willing to give 
this land at like massive major discounts because they are not being mailed 10 letters in a week like a lot of the houses get. They're just, it, it's not as much demand. So when they get our offer letter or our postcard, they're willing to negotiate because I'm probably the first one that, that has actually reached out to them. And a lot of times they're willing to let it go for a way less because there's not as much emotion to it. And then I, I get that, I get that massive discount for the land. And then I turn around and find someone that's looking for land. It's almost like one man's trash and turning it into another man's treasure. And I turn it into a seller financing deal that gives me passive income. So that's a powerful thing. Is there a way to know how long that process typically takes? Yeah, I'll tell you, um, when I was just starting out, when I wasn't buying like large packages, packages of land, when it was just like onesie, twosie type stuff, you know, my first couple of deals took me a couple of weeks. And for instance, like the first deal, the retired CPA that traded, you know, some tax work for a parcel of land that he purchased. I bought it pretty much within about a week and had it sold within about a week. Uh, but the cool thing is, is I found my buyer first. It was actually a realtor <laughs> that I called because I had no clue what the land was worth. And her real estate office was right there. And she made me an offer on the spot. And I was like, hey, that works. There was no negotiation with my seller, no negotiation with my buyer. I was like, this is a sweet deal. <laughs> and I took the money and ran. And then the next one was a purchase that I actually used the cash that I had just made from the previous. And now I sell or finance it. That note actually just paid off. Um, and it was several years later. And looking at it, looking back now, I wish I would have went further with the financing and, and maybe gave the guy less, less payments and more interest because it's like, you want to see these things keep building and building and building. That was, that's really my next question is what is, <clears throat> what is the business plan? There's probably not a business plan because there's so many different ways to do it. Yeah, there, there really is. So if I can get it in this, in the, the, <laughs> the the smallest nutshell <laughs> possible the plan for me is to find vacant raw land at crazy discounts i mean like less than 50 cents on the dollar and turn around and find a buyer that can give me the largest down payment possible that i can get my money back out of the deal as fast as possible and seller finance them that property so i get payments for as long as possible and every one of these that we do, for instance, I have a, a gentleman, he's not even 21 years old yet. His name is Orlando. He's just an impeccable human being. He is learning, he is growing. And he found my company about a year and a half ago. And he's like, what can I do with you guys? We started him out in the signs. Now he's selling land. A week ago, he added, I think $500 a month to our gross income coming in because he sold like three, I think two properties actually at 250 each. And that's not a huge week. It was a really slow week, actually. But if we can continue, if he can continuously do that every single week, that's if we do 500 a week, that's two grand a month, two grand a month. Let's just say times 10 months because I, I, I'm like to keep simple math. Yeah, that's yeah. 20 grand additional coming in in 10 months on top of what we've already built. So imagine where you could be five years from now doing just one land deal at a time. And off, I finance some of these for 30 years. And my bigger stuff, because if you look at a 30-year mortgage, it's unbelievable what you pay back to the bank if you borrow 200 grand at 6% interest. You pay back over 430,000 in 30 years if you never refinance or miss a payment. That, that, that uh, makes a lot of sense to me. The, the, the folks who come on the show and they talk about making money trading in the stock market, they talk about just making a small percentage every day, just small little, little, little bits. And over time, that's how you make money investing in the stock market. I think that a lot of people are probably turned off by that because they want to come into something and make a lot of money quickly. <laughs> but that's not the recipe you talked when we were getting started about taking action every day and a few sacrifices each day. And then you put your head down and you wake up and all of a sudden you found success. Yeah. Are, are there the guys out there that their first land deal, they make $30,000 net profit 
I'm, I'm talking about Chris Meeks. I actually just got to do a podcast with him. And then the second deal, second land deal, he bought 96 parcels of land with someone else's money and made $500,000 net profit. And the builder is building him a house. It's almost finished. And this third land deal, he just got a thousand lots under contract. Are there the guys like that, that in two years, they've, they've made like literally a million bucks. And then there's the guys like me that it took me a little longer. My first one was five grand. My second one was 400 a month. My third one was about 14 grand. So, and then I had a full-time job and, and also a new baby. So it's just that, that $400 a month though was life-changing for me. It told me that, holy cow, your truck payment is being paid. Let's do it again so your wife's van gets paid for. And let's do it again so the diapers get paid for. And then before I knew it, we were, we were almost pulling in almost nine grand a month in about a 10 month period. And my bills were not that much as, a, as a, a lieutenant in the army. And we were financially free. And we started making you know, decisions on like what we wanted to do, to do for the rest of our lives. And that was me getting out of the military. And uh, it's just little changes like that. It's, it wasn't anything ground earth shattering. I didn't make 500 grand on my second land deal, but some people do. Yeah, I think that that's an inspiring thing. So <clears throat> talking about somebody who's listening, they say, well, this is that's, okay. That, that, that sounds pretty good. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm interested in doing that. What do I, what do I need from a, uh, cause it's going, there's going to be a learning curve. So I need yeah. information and knowledge. I need some money and I need, I need time. Yeah. I'll tell you, I didn't have a lot of money or time. Um, but let me just break it down. You want to break it down like I can show the, the, the listener that's listening to this exactly how to do this right now. Like, and I can share it with the story that I did it. So I, I literally went to the, the, the tax collector's office. Florida, we call it tax collector. Colorado is called treasurer's office. You really want to go to the office of the person that makes sure the property taxes are paid. That's it. And you want to ask them for a tax delinquent list. You know, the list of people not paying taxes on their land or their properties. And a lot of these, a lot of these counties, it's going to be a big, massive list of all the properties, single family houses, mobile homes, land, you name it. And you're going to have to figure out what is the vacant raw land. Sometimes there's a three digit code. Sometimes there's a legend. Sometimes you just literally have to scrub each one of those, click on each file and see what says vacant raw land or see what says zero dollars improvement or zero percent improvement because that tells you right there there's nothing on the land and that was the hardest part about this whole thing i found a virtual assistant in the philippines she charged me five dollars an hour and she went through every single one and it took her weeks but i couldn't do that because i was working like 13 hours a day with the army plus i had a newborn that wasn't sleeping at night and my wife was like angry at me because like the baby wasn't sleeping <laughs> and I'm gone all the time. So she was a little bit envious. Um, so all that was going on in my life. We got that list and then I mailed that list a postcard and it was very simple. And it said, Hey, my name is Brent. I'd like to buy your land. Please give me a call. If you're interested in a fair cash offer or text me, God bless you. And I put my phone number on there and my phone rang. And then I had the first guy that called, I already kind of mentioned him. He was a retired CPA. He traded some tax work for the land. And he, he was so far behind on taxes. And this land was not buildable because there was only one ingress and egress, basically one entrance. So the fire department would not let them build on this, on this road. And I'm like, well, I don't know what to do with this land. I had no clue what I was doing, but that's okay. Cause like it worked out. So I went to see the land and I had no clue what it was worth. But the, the seller's like, just give me $285, it's yours. And I was like, you're kidding me, right? $285 for a piece of land. The land was overlooking the Pike National Forest. And this wasn't long ago. This was 2016. And it was just the most beautiful place in Palmer Lake, Colorado. They're selling those lots for like 25 grand each right now. So I didn't know what it was worth. I'm there. I'm leaving. I call the real estate office down the street. And I was like... I don't have any clue what this is worth. I'm in the process of buying it. What could you list it for? Because I, I, I think you're probably the most familiar with the land because you're really close. She was familiar with the street. 
Uh, she said maybe 10 grand. So the realtor just told me what the land was worth. And I thought, I thanked her for her time. I told her I'd call her back when I got it under contract. Or I'm sorry, I would call her back when I purchased it. I already had it under contract, $285. So she called me back in five minutes and made me an offer of five grand. I said, let's do it. So I called the seller. I said, hey, I'll pay you Tuesday. And then I got the quick claim deed on Tuesday, wrote him the check. Didn't do any title searches, none whatsoever. Bad on my part. I should have had the title company check it all out. Thank God there was no issues. And I got a $5,000 certified check on, Friday, on, on Wednesday. I mean, and that was it. Like I just kept going forward and I just kept growing. The land deals kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that was it. Like that's how they go out and do a deal. Amazing. That is an awesome story right there. Has, has the process, it hasn't been streamlined. So it still will require me to go and do the research. Yeah. I mean, you can streamline it. I now have a virtual assistant has been with me a couple of years and she does all the due diligence and the, and we have another guy that does the title work for us. And now that we're in multiple counties, it's, we've had some growing pains. Uh, there's been some challenges because every county is just a little bit different, like the names, like tax collector or, uh, you know, the treasurer, things like that change. But at the end of the day, it's still vacant raw land. People can go look at it no matter what time of the day. You don't have to schedule an inspection period or, you know, hey, are you going to be home at this time? Hey, can you leave the key in the lockbox? Where's the key? It's not in the lockbox. There is no lockbox. It's vacant, raw, clean land. I love it. All right. So how much, if, 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 if you're telling me, Okay, George, you're interested in doing this. How much time will I need to invest to actually learn? Or is, 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 is that it? Like how you broke it down, it just is that simple. The learning part's easy. It's just taking the time to find the list of landowners. And I talked about the tax delinquent list. There's other lists with motivated landowners, like you know, people that got inherited the land or, got, or it's in probate currently. And at the end of the day, we just need to get in front of landowners and communicate with them and, and see if they'd consider selling the land. So time-wise, I was spending about two to three hours a day, five days a week. And that was, you know, before I would have to get to, to, to my military job, like during my lunch hour, there may have been a few times where I would sneak away and hide in the bathroom and take some calls from, from uh, sellers or buyers. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I found, I literally looked at my schedule deleted Facebook. Well, actually that's not, that's not true because I posted a lot of land on Facebook. That's how I sold it, but I'd no longer scrolled. You don't scroll, you create, don't consume, create, you know, screw Netflix, got rid of it. Like there was no time for TV. If I was in the car, I was talking to a seller or a buyer. I was just really trying to be as efficient as possible with my time. Now I don't recommend talking on the phone and driving. <laughs> Um, that's not, I cannot do two things at once really, but I would be learning too and listening to podcasts and implementing. Love it. Well, Brett, people are ready for that difference making tip, even though you've given us a lot, what do you have for them? You know what? Just take action. That's the difference. I, I keep saying it on this podcast, take direct action. And that's, so you get a little bit of, of, of instruction, take the action. And by taking the action, a result comes. And that's where the education, you know, you got all those books behind you there. You can read every single one of them and not do a darn thing. And you're not going to, you're not going to be no, you're not going to be any different next year. Your life is not going to be any different. You and your mind might be different, but it's like Jim Rohn's book. One of Jim Rohn's book, he's like, put this book down and do the 10 pushups now. Well, I think that that is great stuff that definitely gets to come up. Yes. Put the book down, do the pushups, Brent. Love it. Well, thanks for coming back on. Where can people learn more about you? How can they engage with you? Yeah, I mean, I've got a, got a YouTube channel. If you search Brent Bowers, uh, check that out. And then if you, I mean, the landsharks.com is a little bit about our, our course that we provide the instruction of exactly what to do, when to do it. And um, that's just a couple ways right there. Love it. Well, if you enjoyed as much as I did, show Brent your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas. Find their YouTube channel, they're Brent Bowers, B-R-E-N-T-B-O-W-E-R-S, 
go to landsharks.com and check out the resources, check out the course. If this is something that you are serious about doing. Thanks again, Brent. Hey, thanks, Georgie. <laughs> Until next time, keep fighting the good fights. We are all in this together. <laughs>